As we do every week at this time, we have the mailbag, and that means we send it out to Frank Close, who's our 97.3 ESPN Phillies insider, Sports Talk Philly, on Twitter, at Frank Close with a K. And Frank, good afternoon to you, sir. How are you, gentlemen? We're doing okay, bud. Uh, and the Phillies had been on a little bit of a win streak and providing some positive feelings. And then, oh, yeah, the 65 and 33 Astros come to town and wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. Thanks for playing. Brian McCann last night goes deep. Alec Bregman goes deep. Those were back-to-back before the rain delay. By the way, an hour and 52-minute rain delay. So if you watched all three hours and 27 minutes of the game, plus – waited through all the nice filler programming of the rain delay. You are dedicated. They had 17,567 at the ballpark last night. Frank, my big takeaway from last night was that Vince Velasquez only went three innings, giving up six hits, four runs, all of them earned. He only struck out one and only threw 38 strikes and 65 pitches. And last night, of course, the Astros did not lead, need Ken Giles, but this was sort of the reunion of, you know, did this trade work or not? That's how we like to evaluate those things. What did you take away from last night's game? Well, it's a shame that Velasquez couldn't go back out for a fourth inning, and a lot of that had to do with the rain. You know, when, when pitchers sit for that long, you know, usually your night's over. So, so unfortunately, even though he gave up a few runs, or he never really got the opportunity to try to extend that outing. And, and remember, remember, this is only his second start since coming off a disabled list, so so he could have been a little rusty in the beginning, and maybe he would have found his groove, but he never had the chance to actually show it. So, so that's kind of the disappointing part. And then once you come back from a rain delay, you kind of go to your long man, who's usually not your strongest, and then the, the game just got out of control. The jokes that I had, is it Pinto or Pinto? Because I said something like, if you hit him from behind, he catches on fire. But you're probably too yeah, young Pinto. to understand that joke. <laughs> Pinto. Pinto. Okay, well, let's get into the mailbag and not make dumb jokes. It's Frank Close. Each Tuesday, what he does is puts the questions out, seeks the questions out on Twitter, at Frank Close with a K, and then you check back on Tuesday when we talk about it here. So Ron L. is the first question in this week's mailbag. He wants to know, hey, Frank, what's the plan to get Eikhoff back to last year? Is it possible, or do you have to send him to the minors? Well, certainly uh, certainly he is a... uh, um the guy that the Phillies absolutely would like to get back on track. He's not his old self, uh, but uh, I think uh, I think what you see for sure is that uh, his mechanics are kind of all out of whack at this point. And in order to uh, in order to get back on track, I think what he's going to have to do is is make sure that he gets uh, gets gets his reps, gets to pitch uh, minor leagues, uh, you know, or something that are probably not in the cards for him. So. Uh, so I think what they need to do is to just throw him out there, let him let him continue to um, continue to pitch, and kind of work work through these little mechanical flaws that he has. Hey Frank, Deshaun uh, Barry wants to know what are the Phillies going to get in return for Pat Neshek? Yeah, so that's this is a very interesting uh, interesting question to discuss for uh, this trade deadline and. And on Sports Talk Philly, we welcomed in a guest yesterday to, to really dig into that question and break that down. And and he kind of dove through some of the, the big-name relievers that have been traded the last couple of years. And, and he's kind of saying that there's a, a chance that the Phillies get actually a top-50 prospect in all of baseball. So uh, if you think about the different relievers that have tr- have changed teams in the last year. Now, last year you saw two very high high-talent uh, relievers get get traded in the likes of Aroldis Chapman and uh, Andrew Miller, and and really, what you, you know, certainly Pat Neshek is not those guys, uh, but they were multiple prospects they got uh, for for um, for both of those relievers last year. So uh, taking a look at what that return was, and you consider if you can get one piece. It probably should be a top 51 at this point. Now, think about the trade the, the Yankees just made. Now, they got two other pieces that are very, very useful for the Yankees. One would be Todd Frazier, you know, who, who they simultaneously sort of wiped off the board uh, from, from the Red Sox getting, who were in bad need of a third baseman. Uh, but at the same time, they got back two relievers. One of them was their, their old friend Robertson. And really, uh, you know, when you consider the other, the other arm that they got, that they, they they surrendered uh, premium talent to get that, and I think that that that, that when you, if you're the Phillies and you have all these teams interested, 
uh, what you really need to do is, is really shoot for, for somebody who might be among the top 50 in baseball because that's really kind of what the market's kind of commanding at the moment. Mike wants to know, now that Jamie Garcia and Trevor Cahill have been traded respectively, is there a landing spot left for Jeremy Hellickson, or did the Phillies miss their chance on trading him? Yeah, I think the Phillies kind of lucked out, and, and, and it's kind of unfortunate for both the Washington Nationals and the Los Angeles Dodgers, but both of them had uh, major, major injuries come through the hoops uh, this week. You know, Clayton Kershaw, he's going to be out for, for several weeks. You know, the Dodgers without Clayton Kershaw, Certainly replacing somebody like him with Jeremy Hellickson is, is not the same, but the Dodgers are going to need an arm that's not going to totally, uh, you know, fall apart down the stretch. And the Washington Nationals might be without Steven Strasburg for a while. So, so while you saw two starting pitcher arms sort of get pulled off the market, now all of a sudden there are two more openings. And I think you know, if you look at the, some of the, the rumors out there, the, the, even the Washington Nationals might be trying to get the likes of Sonny Gray which is a bigger name, uh, they're, they're probably going to have to make moves in some, in some respect or another. So even if the top names come off the board for one of those teams, now that you have more in play, you have a better shot that your guy is going to be moved as well. So I, I think now, especially given, given the two names being off the board and more, more time to focus on Hellickson, and with two big-time starters kind of now on the shelf, uh, I think there's, uh, there's probably a pretty decent – chance that the Phillies move Hellickson and, and if you want to talk about his salary being an obstacle I don't think that any Philly salaries are going to be an obstacle this trade deadline because uh, what you're going to see there is the Phillies are just going to say all right we'll, we'll pay the salary just send us talent and really that was the Philly strategy this past offseason is you know we're going to accumulate some veterans with high salaries and one year left on their deal or in Hellickson's case, they, they paid the arbitration number because it only costs them money. And guess what? They can get some talent in return. We're talking with Frank Closer, 97.3 ESPN.com, Phillies Insiders. We open the mailbag every Tuesday at 2.30 here on the Sports Bash on 97.3 ESPN. Frank, you know, the, the mailbag was asking you about Hellickson, and I kind of wonder if, you know, you think about Hellickson, you think about Nishak, you think about some of these guys – is there a possibility that we may walk up to the trade deadline and a team like the Dodgers? Or, you know, we saw the Mariners give up a bunch for Phelps. One of these teams that may not be the Dodgers per se, maybe like a fringe wildcard team, decided to go all in and call the Phillies and ask for multiple players. Because we haven't seen a lot of multiple player deals yet. Could the Phillies maybe be that team that says, we're going to send Hellickson and Nishak and Kendrick or like a three bunch of players, all for a ton of prospects. It, it could happen. I think for that to happen, you're you're going to have to match up with a with a club who might be somebody. And I want to say like the Royals, but you know the Royals just made one of their deals last night. Uh, but a team, you know, the teams that are out there that are like the, the Pittsburgh Pirates, for example, if they're hanging in, uh, the Texas Rangers, I think, are tapped out on funds. If you can basically say, all right, we're going to eat a ton of money here are a few players, uh, then I think that really does command some real substance in return. So, so it, might be, it might be a case where, uh, at the same time, you might be able to get more for them separately. Uh, so if, if the demand for Nishak is as high as it is, and, and we were just talking about the, the call for prospects, maybe in the top 50 or as high as it is, uh, you might, you might uh, be able to get a little bit more separately, or perhaps – one of those teams' top prospects, they don't really want to move. You can kind of talk them into it by giving them a second piece. But, you know, if I'm a contender, I, I would love to have Howie Kendrick on my team. And it, really all he does is hit. You know, so he came right off the disabled list. They, they didn't start him that night. But then, you know, first at bat, he gets a hit. I mean, so all he does is give you professional at-bats. And, and he's, he's probably – a really good example of somebody they could tack on in a trade like that, you know. So he's not he's not going to get to play that much before the deadline, but you know they're they're going to give him a day off. I think every couple of days right now, just to just to make sure he's fresh. Uh, but 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 that would be a good game where the acquiring team doesn't feel like they're putting out everything for for just one rental player. That might sweeten the deal. He's Frank Close, Frank Close with a K on Twitter. It's the Phillies mailbag as we do it each Tuesday at this time and an interesting matchup tonight at the bank. Uh, Charlie Morton, welcome home. Uh, 
don't hurt yourself or don't hurt your hammy there, Charlie Morton, for the <laughs> Astros tonight. Uh, Nick Pavetta counters for the Phils. Hopefully there's no hour and 57-minute weather delay, and our guy Frank Close, no matter how long the game goes, will be watching every single minute of it, and that's why we love him. Hey, Frank, thanks so much, pal. We'll talk to you soon. Thanks, Frank. Thanks, guys. Catch you soon.